Alright guys, I'm hoping that that thing sticks. <laughs> um, no, not that music. Okay, in case you don't know me yet, my name is Juan Gallardo and uh, I'm the UDL facilitator in Chavez High School in uh, HSD, Houston Independent School District. For those of you who know me, you know that one of the strongest principles I hold dear about UDL is that UDL is something that changes you as a teacher inside and outside the classroom, meaning that you keep thinking about it. You keep thinking about ways to give more options to your students, to engage in them, to find options to uh, teach your lessons and, and, and provide them with the knowledge and the skills that they need. And it just struck me right now when I was driving on a Saturday morning, I was thinking about how if you take a look at the framework, you'll see how for each one of the of the columns of the framework, there's a picture of, of this uh, drawing uh, of the brain, an, an image, identifying the area of the brain that is uh, fired up when engaging the kids, when the kids are learning, receiving mostly input, and when the kids are producing, you know, when the kids are doing their homework or their task projects, etc. And of course, I have to go deeper into that because I didn't find that much information about the actual areas, how they're named, etc. The area of the brain that I want to say again, fire up, excuse my, remember I'm ESL, English is my second language, but yeah, the area that gets fired up is uh, when uh, engaging the kids, is the area around the corpus callosum. It's an internal area of the brain, something that cannot be visible from the outside. And it just happened that uh, I did some studies when I was uh, right after college about how the brain functions. And I realized that the internal part of the brain is like, it's very close to what our brain was in previous stages of the evolution. It's like the brain has been growing from the inside out. So the internal part of the brain, the affective network, what makes kids be engaged and interested in a particular thing, a particular subject that you're teaching them or skill, it's pretty emotional. And emotional meaning that it's based on instinct. And humans basic basic uh, instinct is that of survival. So that's why you want to live forever or as long as you can and your emotions are connected to that. And you want your species to keep going, so that's why you have in sexual instincts. That's why you have loving instincts to uh, meet your partner to procreate. That's what makes you be afraid when you see a threat, etc. So it makes perfect sense that that specific area of the brain is the one that is connected to engagement, interest, etc. And I find it funny that those instincts, I mean, we have to use them because we're not machines. We're human, we are flesh and bone. They cannot be rationalized. You like what you like and you cannot explain why. You cannot, you cannot explain why you have certain sexual orientation or food preference. I mean, of course you can try to put it into words, but in the end, it's just instinctive. And that's at the core of the UDL framework. If you don't have that, you may convince somebody to that your subject is the most important one, that what you're teaching is really relevant. But if you don't got their heart, if you don't got their instinct, you're wasting your time. That's why I believe the engagement piece of UDL used to be the third column and they change it to the first, and I completely agree with that because engagement goes first. And that's what I'm putting more emphasis to as my first year as UDL facilitator in Chavez High School here in Houston. So I thought that was an interesting thought to keep your priorities clear as a teacher that is interested or already proficient at using UDL techniques in your classroom. Engagement always goes first, instincts goes first. It's like appealing to your primitive, primitive self. Without that, don't waste any time thinking about options on how to deliver your lesson or options for the kid to, to do their work. And well, that's it. Thank you for listening.